Hi everyone, my name is Nikki. I'm a registered veterinary technician here in Southern California. And today we are gonna be talking about Balance It and how to create homemade complete and balanced diet for your dog using this software. So I've been using Balance It for probably about eight years now to create homemade recipes for both my dogs and clients. And I've been getting a lot of requests over on Instagram on to do a tutorial on how to use Balance It because it is a free open software for anyone to use. It doesn't cost any money. So I wanted to go ahead and put this together for you guys so that you could access it, you could look at it, and it can guide you through the process of creating your first recipe. So I'm really excited about this. I know you guys have been asking for it for a while. So we're going to be going through probably a series of videos here. So this isn't all going to be in one video, but today we're going to cover what balance it is and kind of the basics of setting up to create a recipe. And then next week, we're going to cover the actual demo of creating the recipe that we set up today. And then after that, the week after, I'm going to talk about transitioning, storage, kind of more the logistics of cooking for your dog. So you guys have a really good, um, overview of the entire process start to end of setting up yourself to cook for your pet. So first I wanted to go over what Balance It is. So Balance It is a software program that was created by Dr. Sean Deloney and he is a board certified veterinary nutritionist. Now, what that means is he's a veterinarian that went and did an additional residency and just nutrition. He's actually one of about a hundred nutritionists uh, that are boarded within the US and internationally. And he's one of 20 that does client consults. What it means is that you can actually get a one-on-one -on -one consult with him through UC Davis Veterinary Services if you need a custom recipe for like a different medical condition or something like that. But what he noticed is that over the years, he's been getting more and more requests for dogs that are healthy to have recipes that are homemade created. And unfortunately, because there's not that many vets that do client consults, so there's only 20 of them, a lot of people, before they even get to a boarded nutritionist, they actually start by just looking up recipes online and then using a random recipe to cook for their dog for a period of time. Now, that isn't great. The reason for that is because a majority of recipes through many, many different research studies have been actually found to not be complete and balanced, meaning that they have deficiencies within the recipe. They're missing something. It might be something as significant as calcium, but most of the time it's like little things like magnesium or zinc or iodine that is not included within the recipe. Um, so they found that about over 90% of these recipes that you find online or in books, even if they're written by veterinarians, are not complete and balanced. They did find that all of them written by boarded nutritionists were balanced though. So that is a shining light in um, choosing recipes online if you'd like. But basically what he wanted to do because he saw this need within the industry and then there was this bottleneck because there's only 20 of them that do client consults, he wanted to create a formulation software that had kind of all of his knowledge on healthy pets, but put into an a form that the lay person or the pet parents can go ahead and utilize to create homemade recipes. And that is what Balance It is. It's a completely free formulation software. It does have the option of using the Balance It vitamin and mineral blends um, to go ahead and add them to the recipes, or you can toggle it to using human supplements. So whichever one is more accessible or easier for you or more um, cost-effective, it doesn't really matter. Um, obviously, how they make money with this formulation software is their supplements supplements. Um, but just, I guess, a general disclaimer starting out here, I am not sponsored or affiliated with Balance It in any way, shape, or form. Um, I would love to be affiliated with them, but I'm not. Um, I just am doing this tutorial because it's been so highly requested by so many different people. So I wanted to give you guys this information for your information. So FYI. So Balance It is a software program and supplement. Now, what I like about Balance It and also some of the limitations of Balance It is that, like I said, it's kind of his knowledge put into a software program. So first it's gonna pull from the USD database and then it's gonna give you modified at water factors, which look at digestibility of different nutrients for dogs. Then it's also gonna only pull the ingredients from the USD database that we have full nutritional information on, meaning that if an ingredient is lacking in certain vitamins and minerals, it actually won't pull that food because it doesn't wanna include it and have a possible deficiency or new 
trained access because it's using incomplete data. So it has some fail safes in there. They've also included research study information in here for formulations. So if you're using, say, an ingredient that is currently suspect or they're trying to do additional research on, like right now they have legumes flagged since they're researching it regarding DCM in the veterinary space, um, they'll actually make it so you can't include certain ingredients over certain percentages in order to kind of have these fail safes on creating recipes. Because when you do do a homemade recipe, you aren't doing additional digestibility studies or feeding trials or anything like that. So we need these additional fail safes on to make sure that we are safely feeding our dogs. So that is what I really, really like about Balance It and those fail safes. Now, I will say, Many people hate those fail safes because it makes it so you can't generate recipes. It won't allow you to generate an unbalanced recipe or one that has these certain ingredients in it. So it can be also some of the major frustrations of it. It also, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Now, as far as supplementation using Balance It, so Balance It allows you a couple of different options. Um, they have three supplements for healthy dogs. So they have the Balance It Canine, which is the black label, the Balance It Plus, which is the white label, the Balance It Carnivore Blend, which is the purple label. Now, the Balance Balance It Canine was our first supplement. It's actually not heat stable. So practically what this means is that the supplement has to be added to cooled or cold food. The food needs to be kept cold and it cannot be offered warm. Now you can kind of get around that a little bit of if you need to warm the food and then you add the supplement right away and then feed it to your dog, that's probably fine. But honestly, if you're heating it, you're probably going to want to go with the Balance It Plus. So the Balance It Plus is heat stable. Now, what that means is that you can heat this supplement up one time. So if you add it during the meal prep process, when the food is cooled, you can go ahead and heat it up before you're giving it to your dog. If you add it into or you don't add it into the um, meal when it's um, cooled, you can also add it in hot, and then you just feed the food cold. So one heating for the Balance It Plus, that's what it's used for, is to heat it. And it can be a really good option for picky dogs um, or dogs that like their food to be warmed in order to eat it. Also dogs that have certain medical conditions that maybe um, we need them to eat a highly palatable diet. The Plus, it also comes... Um, the balance at K, which is for kidney disease, comes as a plus as well. And usually I recommend the plus for different types of diseases and conditions where nausea can be associated with them. Or if your dog's going under chemotherapy or something like that, the plus is a great option for that. Now, the carnivore blend is different than the balance at plus and the balance at canine in the sense that it's designed for an all meat and oil based diet. No carbs, no fruit, no veg. And the reason that it's different is because the ratios of nutrients are going to be different using the carnivore blend versus using the balance of canine because meats will have higher amounts of phosphorus. And since you don't have the added carbs to kind of balance it out or lower on a caloric basis, you need a supplement that can supplement at adequate quantities of calcium. So it just has a higher amount of calcium in it to get that, that ratio. So if you want to do an all meat based diet, you're going to want to go with the carnivore blend. Now, the other option, like I talked about earlier, is you can use human supplements. So human supplements, there's a toggle function where you can go ahead and access those. Now, they it can be a really good option if one, you have a picky dog, or if you have a, um, you don't have access to balance it. So either it's really expensive to have it shipped to you because you're international, or it's just not even accessible where you live. You can toggle to human supplements and use those instead. Um, some of the limitations of human supplements is one, if you're using a very limited ingredient recipe, so say it's just like muscle meat, carbs, fruit, veg, oil, um, most likely you're gonna need a lot of supplementation. Uh, so human supplements might be a little cumbersome. The other thing that's kind of frustrating with human supplements is that if you have a really small breed dogs, human supplements are made for people our size, not for a two and a half pound Chihuahua or Yorkie. So the one sixteenth of a tablet is extremely difficult to measure. Um, so they may not be a good choice for really, really small dogs in order to find accurate amounts. And if you live international, you may not have the same brands available as us in the U.S. or the ones that are recommended on Balance It. So you may have to do a lot of research on the back end, finding comparable brands that you can use in your area. Now, if you are struggling and you are international or you need help with finding supplements, um, you can go ahead and just message me or set up a consult with me and we can discuss kind of what options you have. I usually, when I make human uh, diets that need human supplements, I like to make minimally supplemented recipes. So less than four supplements added to a recipe because I find that that's 
manageable for most people, whereas these minimally supplemented are uh, minimal ingredient recipes that are just like some muscle meat, they just they require too much supplementation to make human supplements really a good option, or at least a practical option. Now the limitations of balance it. So it does have limitations, just like with any formulation software. It it's pretty open-ended, right? Like it has all of these ingredients, it has all of these different options. Now, when you have lots of options, the problem with having lots of options is that there's sometimes too many options. And maybe if you don't have a direction, it can be really hard to choose like what protein you want to use or what fat or what carbohydrate, it gets a little overwhelming and you just don't know where to, what to grab. So the problem with balance it is because it has so many options. If you don't know what you need, your dog's nutritional needs, if you don't know what ingredients you want to choose and why, it can be overwhelming or you might end up with um, having a really hard time figuring out a recipe. Now, the best thing about balance is you can do individual nutrition. Now, individual nutrition is beautiful when it's done right because that means that your dog's going to get everything they need for exactly the life stage and activity level they have. Instead of using a pre-made or manufactured diet that maybe doesn't quite fit their nutritional needs, you can choose exactly what they need. And that's what I love about homemade diets is that customization to do it just for your dog and no one else's. So that's really, really wonderful. Obviously, nutritional needs can vary based on age, activity level, medical conditions, lifestyle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and link some blog posts below if you guys want to learn more about dogs nutritional needs and kind of what might influence that but there's a lot of different things to consider here so if you're kind of lost you can either start with those blog posts or just I guess message me and I can try to help you uh, direct you towards some information um, but a good place to start if you have no idea what your dog's nutritional needs is to consider or think about, is my dog doing well on their current diet? Because if they are doing well on their current diet, like say you're feeding a kibble diet or a pre-made fresh food diet and they're doing well and you want to do it as a homemade diet for whatever reason, cut costs because you want to switch to fresh food, whatever it is. Sometimes the best place to start is to just copy the diet that your dog is on. If they're doing well, they're maintaining their weight well, their coat looks good. Let's just make the same diet, but fresh food DIY. And that's what we're going to kind of go over today. And I'm going to give you an example on the demo video as well, is how to do this, how to create this recipe um, based off a diet that you know your dog does well on. So we're going to go similar ingredients and composition and similar caloric needs. And we're going to make a diet that kind of matches what our dog's doing well on now. So this is my example that I'm going to use. I picked a random diet here. I just did Purina Pro Plan. It's their complete essentials. And basically what you start with the matching game is you're going to look at the ingredients panel and you're going to translate the ingredients panel, which is usually feed based ingredients with ACFO definitions to whole foods ingredients. And this will allow you to pick the right ingredients for the recipe. So for example, for this, they had chicken, rice, wheat, by uh, poultry byproducts, soybean meal, beef fat, corn gluten meal, corn, uh, egg product, fish meal, oils were soybean oil and fish oil. Now, if I wanted to translate that to um, balance it, uh, different ingredients, first, I'm going to kind of evaluate what these different terms mean. So poultry byproduct meals means chicken organ meats. Um, if we look at corn, we don't really have whole food corn gluten meal, if that makes sense, like we do, but not really in the whole food sector. Our corn kernels just aren't as digestible. So usually if I have a recipe that contains corn, just logistically, I can't match that very well. So I try to choose comparable ingredients. So I might choose like a novel carbohydrate, something like millet instead. Um, in this case, we already have two carbs, rice and wheat higher on the ingredients list. So I'm just going to use those. And then uh, we have a couple of different sources of fat. There's a fish oil, a soybean oil, and a beef fat. So so the fish oil itself is providing omega-3, soybean oil is providing linolytic acid, and then the beef fat is probably a flavoring agent, maybe also providing some additional fat to this recipe if the recipe, because of the chicken, is particularly lean to help with composition. So the secondary proteins we see at the end are some eggs and fish. So I'm going to go ahead and translate that into the balance of ingredients that are listed, and we're going to do chicken and chicken organ meat. We're going to do rice and wheat. 
most likely brown rice. We're going to use like a whole wheat pasta or a whole wheat bread. And then as far as soybean, that's a source of linolytic acid. If you have access to soybean oil, you can use that if you wanted to match it directly. But other sources of linolytic acid that you can use are safflower oil, walnut oil, corn oil, canola oil, sesame oil, um, kind of your nut seed oils. Ones, oils that aren't high in linolytic acid are going to be olive oil, coconut oil, and fish oil. So don't use those, but the other ones on the balance that are going to have some linolytic acid within them. Um, and then we're going to also add in a fish oil. And on balance, it, there's two sources of fish oil. You can either use Volactin or Nordic Naturals. Secondary proteins are going to be hard-boiled eggs because that's a, a pretty lean form of an egg. Um, and then we're going to use some type of oily fish, so maybe salmon or sardines within our recipe. Now, the second thing we need to do is match composition. So we're going to look at the guaranteed analysis panel in this case, and we're going to plug it into the guaranteed analysis converter on balances. So you can find that by going to help, which you can see on the top of this here. And then you go down, it'll see guaranteed analysis converter. Then you just plug the guaranteed analysis into the converter, press calculate, and it's going to give you some of these colored numbers on the side. So pink is protein, yellow fat, uh, blue is carbs. And we're going to keep those aside because we're going to use that to match our macro composition for our dog. And then finally, we're going to calculate what our dog's caloric needs are. So, or what our caloric, uh, how much they're currently ingesting calorically from this balanced diet. So for example, if you're feeding your dog two and one thirds cups per day, you look at the bag and you will find the calories per cup, which is kcals per cup. You're going to times the kcals per cup by the volume that you're feeding. So in this case, 2.333, and that's going to give you about 900 calories per day that you are feeding of this complete and balanced diet. Now, I do want to kind of stipulate here, you do need to evaluate your dog's body condition score to know if the amount of calories you're feeding per day is appropriate. If your dog is not an ideal weight, which is the four slash five out of nine on the scale here, then I would actually talk to your vet to discuss what your dog's caloric needs are before you try to figure this out. Um, just because we don't want to continue to have either a dog that is too thin or a dog that is overweight. We want to have them in an ideal weight uh, when we're putting them on fresh food. And then after we transition them, which we're going to talk about later, we are going to continue to monitor our our dogs every two to four weeks with weights and body condition to make sure that they're staying at a healthy weight and not losing or gaining weight. But the idea here with matching caloric needs is so that we are right in that same ballpark so we don't need to make additional adjustments ideally. Now at the end of the matching game we have the ingredients we're going to choose, our composition that we're going to look for, the calories that our dog needs. Now when you have this all completed what you're going to go ahead and do is take this list to your grocery store. You want to make sure you can source all your ingredients. It's going to really suck if you get all the way through this process to the end, you get to your grocery store and you realize you have no chicken organ meats uh, available. So, or maybe the oil that you want to use is not available. Now you can obviously special order these things, like that's fine. Um, but you want to make sure that your sourcing is going to be something that is easily accessible and that you're going to be able to get it on a regular basis. If you have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops to in order to source your ingredients, especially with how kind of things are right now, it can be really hard to stay consistent on a recipe. And some dogs don't handle rapid transitions of ingredients and things like that. And if you have a dog with allergies that needs a certain protein or carbohydrate, if you can't source it, then it's not really helpful to have it in a recipe. So always, always, always double check your sourcing before you move any further with something like this. But we went ahead and you found all these ingredients, great. Then you're gonna go ahead and formulate your recipe to match what we just did here. And that is what's gonna be in the next episode or the next video. So I hope to see you next week when I talk about the actual demo of creating that recipe. And at the end, you'll kind of have an idea of how to use balance on a practical sense, whereas this was more talking about like background information and setup. So hopefully this was helpful and I hope to see you guys next week.